unmasking the mysteries of auras and color energy with Farah Syed. Step into an electrifying journey with artist and color energy specialist Farah Syed. Discover the captivating world of auras, the vibrant energies we exude, and their intriguing colors. Explore how Farah reads these unique color compositions to create personalized art pieces. Learn how she defies the norms and empowers those without sight to feel the color energies physically. Unravel the magic of art and color energy with Farah. Welcome to the Wellness Driven Life Show, where you're about to go on a wellness driven ride. <music> Let me share a little bit more about the guests that we have here today. Farah Syed, FRSA, is based in London and strongly advocates making art accessible to all. Her inclusive approach to sharing art led her to design and develop her art appreciation workshop for the blind and partially sighted in 2009, which she has delivered globally. Farah is a certified advanced pranic healer. Her bespoke workshops and therapy sessions highlight the healing powers of art and color energies. Reading people's unique color energy auras and creating a personal piece based on them has proven to be a therapeutic solution to heal many ailments and significantly improve well being mentally emotionally, and physically. I am so pleased to welcome here today, Miss Farah. Thank you so much, April, for having me. It's an absolute pleasure working with you. I am so excited to have you here, Farah. Now, I came across your art uh, during a post, and it is absolutely beautiful. But what really drew me in was the wording that you use, the description, the energy behind colors and art and all of the things. And so this is going to be a really insightful conversation. Not many people know about this. So this is something that we get to learn about from you today. So let's start by sharing with the audience a little bit more about you. So I'm um, very, very grateful that art has been in my life since childhood because I connected immediately um, with the power of creating art, engaging with art and um, expressing emotions through art from an early age. And I have never let it go. Um, you know, you you feel very empowered when you are able to just create something that makes other people happy as well. That right from the start has been something that's really inspired me to to just keep creating art and in and getting other people excited about art in ways that they perhaps wouldn't have uh, experienced it in in the way that I share it, which is really really nice because it's just very um, kind of like soul enriching as well um, in the midst of difficult times stress etc to suddenly be able to release tension and release um, pain when you engage in art or if you create art so that's the reason why I've always had art in my life well, I think it's an extraordinary thing when those of us can really continue carrying that creativity throughout our life. Uh, I know for me, when I was a child, I loved art. I loved coloring. I loved drawing. I loved every single thing about art. And as life continued to to 
to come and I engaged in different things, it slipped away and I did less and less and less throughout my adult life. And so I think that it's brilliant and beautiful when people can really carry that on and enliven that within us adults who have not been continuing on that journey. And so share with us a little bit about how that really how that you were able to continue that throughout life? Were there moments and times where you lost track of it or have you truly been carrying it on for all of these years? So, um, yes, definitely there have been phases in life when I was not able to even think about creating art. But even during those times, I still engaged with art because it was always um, a very, very part of um, a kind of like healing process as well as an instant source of joy. So there's so many artists that used to give that form, give that to me straight away. So that always was in my in my life. But creating art, absolutely, there were periods where I there was no chance I could because of, you know, the challenges of life. But I think it's always the case as um, you know what you want. And um, I'm very grateful to have been always been able to kind of like attach myself to art in that way. But yeah, up and down, let's say. <laughs> Yeah, well, and so the the type of art that you create in the world is very unique. It's it's rare that we find people who are actually tapping into going deeper, going within, going more on a spiritual journey with art. And I think we we naturally tap into that. I mean, when we are create our creative states, that is getting closer and closer to that spiritual higher self of our uh, being. However, I don't think that many artists, um, even though they're doing it without understanding, they don't really voice that or concentrate on it like you have. And presented that in the world as a healing type modality. So. Mm -hmm. When when we talk about that, can you explain, Farah, what what it was, when it was that you started realizing that art really had all of these energies attached to it and auras? When did you first start learning and understanding about aura energy? So, yeah, that's um, quite a meaty question. <laughs> But um, something that uh, is it is life changing for me as to what happened when I was living in India. Um, it was in two thousand and six. Um, we moved to um, Bangalore in India, and we were um, uh, there as expats through my husband's work. And at that point, it was a real life changing situation. I won't go into all of that, but it's prior to that. All the art that I created was representational art. And it was, you know, landscapes, portraits, um, still lifes, etc. And I didn't even like abstract art prior to this point. But what happened to me while I was in India was when I started to create, it was the first time I felt free um, for various um, uh, other challenges that were going on. But I felt free. And it was a, a real kind of transition period where I was going within my inner self, um, listening to how I was feeling, doing things that I wanted to do, you know, self-healing, self-care. It's the first time I was able to do that, probably in about 10 years. Um, so it was a real um, a kind of like transition, a big transition for me. And when I started to create the first piece when I was in India, at that moment, I still honestly cannot explain how it happened because all I wanted to do was to create how I felt. And what came out mm. onto the canvas was an abstract. I did not plan it. I did not know what was going to come out. I just created strokes. I created markings. I used colors. I was using a palette knife to create textures. And when I stood back to see what I had created, I was dumbfounded because I didn't know how that happened. But it was, uh, it, you know, it, it just gives me goosebumps even thinking about it now because I was in shock. When I took time to process, what had happened, I realized that they were inner energies that were transmitted straight onto the um, canvas, translated onto the canvas, let's say. And it was an uninterrupted flow. I didn't plan it. I didn't know what was going to come out. And I was taken aback. I took time to process what had happened. 
And from that point on, April, I have never looked back. So every single piece that I have created since that point has always been no planning, an uninterrupted flow of energies from within. And if there's a point where I just don't feel like I want to make a stroke or create a marking, I stop. So I never ever force any of my creative um, you know, interactions with the canvas. It's Ooh. always very much how I feel. And if I don't feel it, I actually take a break and I don't touch the canvas until I feel like I want to. Um, uh. I'm very, very grateful for trusting that process. That is still giving me joy. And I'm very grateful that other people feel that too. So. Farah, it sounds like something that we should all learn how to do is really only make movements when we have the feeling to do so, mm -hmm. when it feels right, when it, we feel moved and inspired to. And when we talk about creative energies and energies in general, we're energetic mm -hmm. beings. And of course, there's so much uh, talk and description of how we create our own realities. Mm -hmm. And so when it, it's a more difficult to describe that or to see the evidence of creating our own realities, because mm -hmm. it, it's that time aspect of it, right? Where it yeah. doesn't happen immediately. But mm -hmm. it sounds to me like when we do the work that you're describing through art, this is truly uh, very quick evidence of us creating with the energy that we have, the mm -hmm. essence of our being. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I see this in many art forms as well, um, you know, whether it's music or, um, you know, uh, acting. There's so many different um, incredible forms of art that evoke emotion with us. And when I was in um, at Bangalore, I was surrounded by stunning nature. It was just incredible. Mm. Also, the light there was, I just, I haven't come across any light in comparison to where we, where we were in Bangalore. Every country, every setting, every, you know, um, environment has different light. But in Bangalore at that point, the colors, the um, stunning uh, flora and fauna was just amazing. And as I said, the light, the energies around, and it's also at that point where I, um, discovered the incredible practice which is a pranic healing and that's where I was introduced to um, pranic healing which is healing with our own um, energy vibrations and energy um, gains from uh, the sun the um, air the ground that is just the most incredible power um, but then I um, uh, learned about advanced pranic healing and became a certified practitioner of, of advanced pranic healing because that is healing with color to find out the powers of color then I investigated it to the science aspect like the, the physics behind color energy and what I discovered was incredible which is why then I went down the road of um, working with uh, the blind community and mm -hmm. showing people how to feel color energy through my workshops. But um, yeah, it's just a blessing. And I do absolutely feel that I, I'm a very curious person, <laughs> which is uh, has really opened up so many doors and experiences for me because I think also as I get, I know for me, as I got older, I, I took many more risks without fear. So many things have happened in, that I maybe would not have done in, I, in my 30s. But in my 40s, I had a feeling of, I'm curious, I'm going to look into it. Whether it's a good or bad outcome, doesn't matter, but I will feel regret if I don't. Because of that, I, because of that approach, so many things have happened. And I'm very, very grateful for that. So I, I actually um, uh, uh, have always told my daughter, just go for it. Don't worry about anything. Just go for it. <laughs> you know, that's an incredible uh, insight for us to have, right, is to really live with this openness, with this mm -hmm. excitement to life, the curiosity, because as you said, it opens so many more doors yes. and, and stepping into what might be fear, mm -hmm. uh, just turn it into curiosity you know, what would happen if, or I wonder what, and 
And so when we switch our wordings and our thought process a little bit more, I think that's really beautiful how you explain that, how you you started opening up a little more, stepping into your 40s and, yes. and experiencing more things. But I want to go back through your journey because and, and walk the audience again through how you really landed to where you are. And it is within that curiosity piece. And initially, you, you had this experience with art where you just felt into it and then you stood back and you were in awe and mm -hmm. you realized how much energy is really being expressed on that canvas and mm -hmm. which leads you into wanting to explore energy more and and going into well if if we are energetic beings what else is giving us energy and also how are we exuding the energy back in this uh, play of reflection etc and Going into nature and receiving from nature is one of the greatest ways to do that. So you're beginning to explore that area as well. And then we're stepping into color energy, which is absolutely fascinating and very rare to think on. And so when when we talk about color energy, I would love for you to talk a little bit more about that. What is it that you you guide people, especially blind? So mm -hmm. you're you're saying that you walk people who who have lack of sight or or uh, thereof, colorblind, etc. And we we all kind of see different hues, right? They say that men and women see mm -hmm. colors a little differently as well. And so when you consider all of those things, you're talking about feeling. A color. Mm -hmm. And so can you share a little bit more about that? What is it like? What's the feeling of yellow? What's the feeling of red, et cetera? <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so when, in terms of the um, uh, advanced pranic healing, that's healing with color. And um, uh, that is not having anything physical from which you can feel a vibration. That it's about the color energies that are being used for healing. But when you, when I did the research about whether we can physically feel color energy through, you know, from items, from um, clothing, etc. I was astounded. And then when mm. I did the research in terms of the physics, because what it is, I'll just explain very briefly. All colors absorb different levels of light and vibrations, um, frequencies, different frequencies, and they then give off different levels of frequencies and vibrations. So say, for instance, like a red an, an orange or a yellow will absorb a lot more um, uh, light. Therefore, their frequencies are on a higher level. And the opposite is for colors like white, pale blue, pale green. They absorb less and therefore they emit a lower frequency. We can all physically feel this. Um, it's, it's, anybody can, everybody can. And to be able to share this, simple technique with somebody who is blind or partially sighted has been incredible because that makes a massive impact in their life and it's also such a sense of empowerment um for them to suddenly be able to feel color which they you know mostly did not know that they could before i mean day-to-day -day simple little things like i was having a chat with somebody who i was on a podcast with recently and she said to me, you know, when I'm cooking, I'd love to know if it's a green pepper or a red pepper. And when I did the color energy ex ex um, exercise with her, she was like, you know, it's just wonderful that now I can actually decipher which is which. And the more you practice it, the more sensitive you become to the different very um, vibrations, which means that you can um, sense them even faster. So I'll, I'll give you a quick example of uh, one of the workshops that I did with Vision Australia in Sydney. And there was a lady who was, uh, her hand was hovering over one of the paintings that I, because I have paintings that I take specific, that are specifically created for the workshop. So her hand was over one section of the work, of the painting. And she said to me, I don't know what's going on here, but my palm is just very, very warm but my fingers are icy cold and I can feel two very distinctive um, vibrations on, on one hand. So when I went over to her, I, I, sh I saw that what it is as her hand was over a very deep orange and her fingers were over a pale green with uh, metallic silver paint. And oh, I was going to say like a blue because I'm thinking. Yeah. Of 
yeah, this lady could feel those vibrations in one hand. And this is the first time that she had ever experienced color recognition without this use of sight. This lady actually went on, she, we stayed in touch, um, uh, and she went on to become a color therapist. So that mm. is wonderful because it's just, again, that feeling of empowerment, whether it's something simple about knowing what color pepper to use or somebody who was able to explore a, a profession in something that she was already very instinctive about. Um, again, she was one, you know, I am very grateful, April, for the amount of experiences that I've had with people globally through the workshops, the blind workshops, mm. where I have seen how art transcends barriers like language, culture, um, disability, age, gender, many things. You instantly connect with a complete stranger through art. Um, and it's just a real privilege to have those experiences with people all over the world. I'm very, well, very grateful. It's a it's a mind blowing experience. This is a new way of communicating. Uh, it's a language, right? Mm -hmm. It's a yes. language without without words and voice. It is without sound. It's the mm -hmm. the language of of feeling and energy and emotion. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't surprise me to when she had this aha experience, very mm -hmm. similar to how you felt when you hit that canvas mm -hmm. for, uh, you know, the, that first experience of what you created through energy that you didn't stop. It opened and inspired you to keep learning more to, you know, now that we have this knowledge, I want to share it with the world because yeah. this is, it's, it's so powerful and mm -hmm. it's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And it, it makes me think, and you use the word uh, as well, but when I think about the, the pepper and with food, and so it's not just going into the art aspect, but we can utilize this feeling and learning energy uh, with anything. And so what it is, is it's tapping into the intuitive self. Mm -hmm. And really yes. being able to be more aware of our our surroundings in a whole new light. Absolutely. I mean, when my one of my first lessons when I was starting down the route of becoming a pranic healing practitioner is the fact that we as humans have so many powers of healing, of um, you know, preventing pain and protecting our energies and because simple things like stress can be so debilitating in so many ways, when you when you access those um, powers that we all actually have, um, it makes life so much better um, mentally, emotionally, physically, for those around you, and you just feel in so much more of a, a, a place of empowerment rather than feeling that everything is you know, hurting you and you are a victim, we can be, you know, we can be the queens and the kings of our bodies. <laughs> so I love sharing that with people because we can do that through many channels. And then for instance, like with art, I love giving people that sense of empowerment because a lot of times um, with art, if you, if, if people's voice, if their opinions are heard about their reactions to art, it gives them a sense of enrichment. So as an artist, one of the first things I absolutely was adamant about was to make art accessible to all. Um, and then, you know, the aspect of the, the blind um, community that I work with. But also, there's a lot of people that say, have said this to me at exhibitions, again, all over the world, where people say, oh, I really love your work, but I don't know much about art. And I just say, stop. You don't need to know about art. It's literally how you connect with color, with texture, with movement, something that evokes an emotion or a memory. You do not need to have a college degree about art to enjoy it. So I break down any elitist barriers of art as well, because I want everyone to enjoy it. And um, that including is in very much including children. So um, I make sure that I take time out to work with schools. Um, and I've had the most incredible experiences with children. Um, I've just finished my third year working with a group of six, seven-year-olds. And it is because of an incredible teacher, Rash Theradayan, who is so passionate about empowering children in many ways. And um, she's an amazing teacher, one of the best I've ever seen. <laughs> but um, it's just a case of how she um, saw the work that I do, because. Um, 
uh, long story, but she um, was a teacher at my daughter's school. So this is going back, what, 12, 13 years. In those days, when I was doing workshops and projects all over the world, I'd always involve the children at the school. There's many examples of how something that they created was working um, that was in an orphanage in Bangalore. So we did all of that. And so then um, uh, Rash asked me to come back to her school to deliver these workshops. And April, the most incredible interactions with these six and seven year olds leave me emotional every single time I do sessions with them. And then when they write their notes afterwards um, to tell me how their reactions were, how they felt, it's just so emotional. I'm not joking. I have tears running down my face from their positive reactions and how they feel empowered with art. Their voices mm -hmm. being heard is so important. And also for them to interact, creating art and interact with art and hear, hearing their interpretations valued, um, not on a digital platform. So, you know, there's a lot of digital exposure for children, but when they are doing something, you know, using their hands, creating yeah. from their mind, it's just been incredible. Also to see how it has really, really helped children. Um, so, um, so, Cause in each class there's different, um, uh, um, you know, children with different um, additional needs. So I have seen it every single session, every single project, where if you have any child, say for instance, who might be on a spectrum of autism or with ADHD, they engage with art in the most incredible way. And it is so, so, it's just inspiring. I am just in, um, you know, so happy to be able to connect with children like this. And then the parents come and tell me after mm -hmm. how their child was always so excited every Thursday to, um, mm -hmm to have their session with, with me. And when we were creating art, we'd always make a big exhibition and celebrate these pupils. So I love hearing the children's reactions, the parents' reactions, and it's just been amazing. Um, so yeah, I'm very, very grateful for these experiences. Yes, absolutely. Because we, as we said in the very beginning, I said, Farah, I, I loved art when I was a child mm -hmm. and yet I didn't carry through mm -hmm. into all of the adulthood years. And what you're doing yeah. is you're really uh, inspiring so much and giving them the understanding, a deeper meaning of mm -hmm. what it does and, and how it really is more creative for us in, in our world. And so mm -hmm. I also want to want to go back a little bit too because you said that this is this is so much deeper this expands our idea of healing and being able to, our bodies are so powerful and just having that understanding and the knowledge of how powerful we truly are is is a gift and yep. thank you so much for sharing that with us to be able to open our minds so we have knowledge of that so mm -hmm. we're going to move into a commercial and when we get back let's share with the audience some photos starting with the one that is uh, right behind you and it, okay. all of its beauty <laughs> stay thank tuned you. thank you are you ready to take control of your ride to wellness rev up with Driven Living. Visit www.drivenliving.com and buckle up for a journey. Get exclusive access to our Wellness Driven Life Show guest portal, where you can dive deep into the minds of our esteemed guests. Sign up for our newsletter and get insider scoops on these distinguished personalities. It's like having a backstage pass to their life-changing wisdom. But that's not all. You'll also receive a free hug. You heard me right, a free hug. An enlightening ebook from the Driven Living team. Discover the science-backed benefits of hugging yourself. It's a fill-up for your wellness tank. Because at Driven Living, we believe in fueling your journey to wellness, both physically and psychologically. So what are you waiting for? Visit www.drivenliving.com today. Welcome back. We're on a incredible conversation. This is really, you know, inspiring me for sure. Farah, let's start by talking a little bit more about the creations that you're bringing into existence. And let's start with the beautiful photo that you have right behind you. Uh, so this piece is um, is called Alexandria. 
and um, it's a piece that it means a lot to me because um, it's just inspired by nature in the, in its abundance. And I love creating on large canvases because then there's more adventure to um, explore. But it's uh, it's one of the pieces also that I love sharing with people in that it all of my pieces do, but um, change with the, any interaction with light. So if uh, one of my pieces is um, it placed next to a source of natural light from morning till evening, they change the light dances off of the surfaces and then you'll be like walking past and you're selling like, oh I didn't see that before so Alexandria is very very um cheeky with the light um she loves dancing around with the light so it's lovely to be able to share that with people but it's just nice to have an immersive experience um with any of my works because also they can be rotated in and viewed in any way i never have signed any of my pieces in the front because i just can't bring myself to disturb the um, what i've created so i've always signed them on the signed them on the back which means that they can be rotated in any way so every mm -hmm. time you rotate you see something different um, i love that yeah, thank you. And then also all my pieces can be experienced using the sense of touch. So that mm. is really immersive and unusual <laughs> because when you experience something using the sense of touch, it evokes different um, emotions and interactions and the the curiosity of exploring what's coming next. And, and also when you are experiencing it using sense of touch, you're feeling the flow, you're yeah. feeling the strokes. And it's it's just really um, nice sharing that with people because again it's very uh, it's a healing um, process when you engage with something with such deep interaction and that is something that I love sharing with people um, and also I think I, I've mentioned that I'd never title any of my works because I want it to be uh, everybody's interpretation to be valued if I titled like if I titled Alexandria fireworks then all you're going to really see are fireworks but because i have not titled the piece sorry by the way when i said titled i have given them names so that i can keep up with the pieces because i couldn't keep up with untitled five six seven eight it was also very <laughs> horrible and boring so <laughs> a very good american californian friend of mine she said to me why don't you give them people names and i said Brilliant. So then they've all got people names. So that's all. Yeah. So I don't know because it doesn't make the mind go into a particular object or yes. scene. You know, so it, it leaves them open to experience yeah. it in, in many different ways or whatever yeah. comes to them in the moment. Mm -hmm. So all of these approaches to how I share art came right from the start, because mm. when I was creating, um, I just thought, you know what, there's it's interesting ways to experience art rather than just um, you know, one way, which I totally respect. And that's how I've grown up um, experiencing art. But because the pieces that I create are with very strong uh, paint, you can't damage it. And that's also why I moved from oil paints to acrylic paints. And all of the paints that I use are from India, because I discovered the most incredible paints that are really hardy once they've dried, and they are so thick that I don't have to mix any wow um additional uh like uh substances to make it uh you know uh, very strong onto the canvas straight from the um from the tin which means that i don't have to think about doing this and this it's a flow the flow has not been interrupted with the process but it's important it also means that when you touch the works they're not going to get damaged so i love sharing that wow. Oh, that is so cool. It's very, very important as an artist. And you're right, it does, it allows you to just flow and do the work instead of uh, mess around with all the other irritating things sometimes yeah. as, as an artist. Uh -huh. And so, but I wanted to, to share because what it made me think of, you use the word immerse. Mm -hmm. And so um, here in the States, we have uh, something that's called uh, immersive experience. Uh, so there's like a immerse, I think it's called immersive Van Gogh, and then they have different yeah. artists that are featured. Mm -hmm. uh, and the way that they uh, have it, it, it's like an experience. So they have it. Um, oh, I can't, I can't. No, I know, it. I know what you mean, April, because we have that in yeah. the UK. We, we actually went last month. Yeah. So yeah, no, I love those experiences. It's just really 
engulfing into the whole glory of art and the colors. It makes me think of your yes. what you're talking about. And I, I, I just foresee this, although yours is with touch as well, but I could absolutely see your artwork being up there and and it being really, really gorgeous. And you know, that said, let's let's bring in some more of the photos that you have because um, you know, they're just stunning. Thank you. That's so kind. Thank you so much. This is Georgia. Um, uh, it's uh, also, I just say, in terms of planning, I don't plan anything except a color palette, and everything comes out, as I said, from energies within. But I love using palette knives. So the majority of the work I create are with varying shapes and sizes of palette knives. And this is a very intense piece in terms of so many textures to explore. Mm -hmm. um so yeah this is um is is all of my pieces are part of me i actually call them my babies so i know that sounds corny yeah. but they are. <laughs> but yeah. yeah this is yeah this is georgia this is this piece is called sophia who's um named after my daughter and um it's yeah. uh it's it mean this piece means a lot to me as well it's because i i do love creating on large canvases and um it's the more bl and, and blue is one of my favorite colors i love all colors but blue is a i have a very deep connection with blue mm -hmm. and um this is a a real representation of my passion for nature especially sea life um yeah. so yeah I'm, I'm very grateful for what i've seen so far in our beautiful planet but yeah this is a very deep connection um uh, to to nature in all its glory and skies i mean i'm obsessed with skies as well april I mean, well, this this makes this piece for me makes me think of like you mentioned the the ocean, yeah. sea life, and a planetary uh, viewpoint. Yes. Like you know, if you just like if you're soaring above the skies in a yes. space sort of uh, mm -hmm. viewpoint of the Earth, mm -hmm. it's just it's just beautiful. It, it, and I think it's also very lovely that um, it's named after your daughter and thought of. <laughs> Thank Our you. Babies. <laughs> Thank you. This is Anastasia. Um, this is a very special piece as well for me. Um, and I, I'll never forget, I just remember really wanting to, um, to have a combination of burnt sienna and turquoise. That's mm -hmm. all I wanted to have on there. And it was, it was just a real joy when I was creating it because it just has such a contrast and people often say to me when they see this piece that they would never put those two colors together, which I love. Really? Yeah, it's yeah, a lot of people say that to me. Um, and also, again, most of my pieces have the gold sheen, but um, Anastasia also, when any alteration of light, it just looks so different. So I love sharing that with my, my collectors and also at exhibitions when I just adjust the light and it just looks, oh my God, you know, that looks so, so different. So mm -hmm. what it is, is when lights are changed, whether it's natural or artificial on my pieces, um, the gold brings out the textures as well. So you see textures that you wouldn't have seen before when there's an alteration of light. So it's a very, it's, it's non-static. All my pieces are non-static, which I love because, you know, it's just nice to kind of do different things with the same piece. So it's just nice to share that with people. Uh, this is a piece called Eva. This is when I had an installation um, in uh, in the city of London, and um, it's this is a very good friend of mine, Carolina Conforti, who's an, such a um, advocate for art and a real supporter of creatives globally. Um, so yeah, uh, so Carolina um, was there, and um, I was, you know really saying to her, please just experience Eva using the sense of touch as well, and and mm. with the green with minimal colors it's a very it's very healing this piece is very calming and it gives you an instant relief of stress and tension and i, I really wanted to keep the colors very simple on this piece for the purpose of giving people a sense of instant stress relief and um, a calming energy well and let's talk about that just for a minute because when when we talk about color energies that's exactly what it does it really invokes those feelings within us and so when we are um like we've talked about nature a lot when we go out into nature it's it's very rare that we're going to start feeling down or low energy because mm -hmm. it 
just doesn't give off that. It just isn't that. So we're not going to experience that being in its present. That's why, of course, we're huge advocates to get outside daily, right? That's why it's important mm -hmm. for us to be out in the sun and to, you know, listen to the birds and, and yes. feel the breeze and all of yes. those things, because it's mm -hmm. part of that experience, very similar to having to touch and, and wanting to experience fully your artwork, you know, all of those senses that we're bringing into play play gives us, um, you know, access to more deeper feelings yes. and all of the emotion that's behind that. So, so green is a very, uh, earth, very healing, very mother sort of energy that we have mm -hmm. there. And so that's a beautiful thing that we bring in with yeah. these pieces. And when we mm -hmm. talk about the colors, yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So the, this piece is called Kazumi and um, it's, yeah, again, experiencing art using the sense of touch just gives you a real distraction from, you know, any tension or stress that you're going through instantly because you, when you use another sense rather than just one, it gives you more power to focus, practice mindfulness because I show people how to practice mindfulness using art visually as well as using the sense of touch and it is i'm very very grateful april for the amount of feedback that i get from people whether it's um uh, a client or at retreats because i deliver uh, my workshops at retreats very tailored and bespoke workshops at retreats where i get people saying to me you know in, in, being immersive in the interaction with a painting the way that you have shown us has just made me feel a real release and i feel just also excited mm -hmm. to know that if I, down the line, I'm having a bad day or need stress relief, I can just go and do it straight away with mm -hmm. the painting. So that is, is the real privilege to be able to share that with people. So um, there's, you know, many, many experiences that we should use using all of our senses because we, as I said, as humans are incredible. Yeah. Uh, this is one of my workshops many years ago, um, and uh, again, you know, it's just lovely to see children get excited about art. But also, I'd like to say, when they're creating abstract art, they feel very free, because mm -hmm. rather than having to just, you know, create uh, realistic art, that's obviously very important and a real talent. But when you have a child creating abstract art and an adult creating abstract art for the first time, I love it because they feel like, oh, I feel like making this stroke and they make the stroke and they feel a release. You know, this is one of the recent ones. And the joy that children have when they're creating abstract art is really different to other interactions because, as I said, it's down to them to create whatever they want with no right or wrong. And children mm -hmm. love that. Adults love that. And um, this is in MoMA, Wales. Um, uh, uh, these, this group were incredible. This is actually a blind workshop. And, um, oh, gosh, this, this was an incredible group. I had delivered a lecture beforehand, and then we did the workshop. Such a wonderful, um, uh, in, it's so interesting people. They really, really were. And, again, you know, I feel very privileged to have these engaging conversations with people. I love learning from anybody and everybody, including children as well. Um, but because sometimes children have such a um, <laughs> kind of like non-cluttered mind and they just say something and you think, oh God, that's so insightful from a six-year-old. And I love that. But um, this this was a wonderful group of people and some of them are actually artists. And then when I was showing them how to feel the color energies without the use of sight, that opened up so many things for them, which again, is as I said, it was just an amazing experience with them. Yeah. I was going to say that, I'd also like to highlight how creativity, engaging with art in an immersive way also is so important for brain health. And yeah. I also work with an uh, organization called Arts for Dementia. Dementia. Um, yeah, I've been on their panel and um, I work with the most incredible people there because what they are truly celebrating is how art can increase our brain activity to put off the um, onslaught of dementia and Alzheimer's um, because art, when you are creative mode, whether you're creating or engaging with art, it develops different um, neurons in your brain, which helps with, um, you know, kind of like keeping 
um, uh, mental illnesses at bay. But I would, you know, just I would love to talk about that another time. But brain health is very, very um, positively impacted with art. Well, this when is we sorry, talk yeah. about uh, you, you're absolutely right. I mean, it's certainly engaging new ways of thinking. That again, going to that creative state is one of our yeah. highest states to yeah. go to. So, of course, it's activating not only the brain but the heart. And when we talk yes. about um, heart and brain coherence, mm -hmm. it, it's activating that. And so, what it what it's doing is is truly bringing us to um, one of the, the best states that we can be in as human Absolutely. beings. But yeah. what I wanted to ask you, Farah, was do you ever have workshops where you intentionally blind people in order to really start utilizing those other senses of feeling? Of course, yeah. I mean, that's my, at the, at the end of the day, when it, when we do, when I do the workshops, it's normally a whole day workshop. Um, I do smaller ones as well, but in the whole day ones, they're better because we have more time to have a, you know, discussion after each section and learn from each other's experiences. But so many people um, say to me that I never thought about art as using it for healing. So, you know, I, I explain to them, you know, with, with art, it actually, if you engage um, in in a more deeper way, whether it's um, you know creating or um, uh, experiencing art, it improves your immune system as well, because mm. different hormones are released, and that improves your um, uh, your body to uh, be stronger in all different ways. And you know there have been so many research um, uh, studies where um, people's brains have been scanned. Um, uh, after a creative session and you have all kinds of different neurons that are activated and from a longer study you've got things like people's per um, peritial lobe which is more ex um, developed because that's where creatives are using a lot more of their brain capacity to create art um, with engaging those kind of um, talents and um, energies etc we are as i said i'm going to say again incredible as humans and i just can't get over how art can help us be healed but also empower us to keep um various illnesses at bay and as you know working with the blind community it's just all inspiring to see how they are you know the people that i've met so brave you know courage um not letting um their situation stop them from doing things uh, you know, I have a friend who's blind. He's a pilot. He, wow. I mean, there's a long list of people that I am just, you know, very inspired by. Um, he does have a co-pilot, just so you know that it's not dangerous. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. um, but it's just really, really in impressive. And um, it's uh, art heals us. Art empowers us. And art can um, keep so many ailments at bay mentally physically and emotionally and i'll just quickly explain oriana this piece is is a piece that means a lot to me because this is the piece that had an interaction with somebody this is while i was in india where they became so emotional that they were crying and i was shocked that that could happen with one of my pieces i had never experienced that before this is early um, maybe in the first year of me creating. So Oriana mm. evokes emotions in this person who was a journalist who was um, uh, interviewing me for my first solo show over there. And I had left her alone with this piece to go and answer a phone call. When I came back, she was crying. And I'm like, oh my God, are you okay? What happened? She said, I've never had this experience with art before. But she said, I can't even explain how, but this piece just hit me hard and brought out mem um emotions of of something that has really really um, affected me in a way as i said i have never had that experience before so that yeah. is something that i will never forget how art can evoke emotion and everybody's different which is why i never titled the pieces but color yeah. evokes emotion so you know you have a some something simple like a burst of blue or a burst of green or whatever it is it it can spark a memory that could be connected to an emotion that could be positive or something that you want to release that's why april it's so wonderful when i have sessions with my clients that emotions can be released where they then feel so light they feel lighter they feel you know more empowered to be able to kind of like, you know deal with challenges and you know 
be able to put things behind as well. So there's many, many things to go through. So yeah, this is an, um, an image of me creating um, a piece. And I feel, well, I have to say, every time I'm creating, after a session of creating, I feel lighter. I feel so happy that mm. I was able to do what I did. And I, and I do feel a sense, a massive sense of enrichment and gratitude always, always gratitude. But yeah, well, this is Ruby. Um, I actually shared Ruby on um, social media on Monday on purpose and i planned this because i don't know if it happens in the states but the first the the mon the second or third monday in january is is labeled blue monday i don't know who came up with that but anyway wow. i've heard a lot of stories about blue monday wow. so I thought, okay because i always do monday motivational posts because i know sometimes mondays can be very hard for people so i always mm. think of what i can do to give people an, a boost on a monday morning um yeah. And I, I shared Ruby on purpose this Monday to combat Blue Monday. <laughs> and I had a lot of responses from people saying, thank you so much, because Ruby, with the red and the flow and the energy and uh, your words, they, they, they really appreciated Ruby giving them a boost. Um, but yeah, red does that for everyone as well. But this piece, I'm actually going to be using this piece in motion graphics soon, because this piece in motion graphics is incredible um but yeah so um that's something i'll share down the line you know i think that that's a really good thing to bring up and i love that you do that on mondays monday yeah it, it can be a little heavy right if we feel like okay we're stepping out of the fun time the rest time the rest period with the weekend into the work week and so so gaining a little bit of momentum with that can sometimes be a little more difficult for mm -hmm. most people i would imagine and we're in this time of year where uh, also we are a little more down than normal it's the season it's the weather mm -hmm. it's yeah, coming yeah. out of holiday season. So yeah. um, yes, we we have those and, and have now been titling things such as Blue Monday and, and talking more about mental health awareness. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I love that you bring that piece in with the, the beautiful colors and you're talking about red is mm -hmm. a color that really helps evoke when we think about our heart and our heart mm -hmm. is often symbolized by the color red and love and passion yeah. and all of those things really help enliven us the fire that's burning within our souls. Absolutely. And red is such a powerful color. The heat from red is incredible. I, April, can't wear too many red outfits because I just get too hot. <laughs> oh, that's a really interesting thing to ponder. Never thought of that. I'm thinking, what oh, yeah. is my hot? This is a warmer color. And uh, so that is really interesting to think about because when you know, we talk about clothes and the things that we wear and the things that we surround ourselves with, you know, our environment as well, you know, what do we see oftentimes and how is it making us feel? And to really start thinking about that and to being aware of what that it really has a, a an effect on us in so absolutely. many ways. Absolutely. And I, we're, I mean, I, I need to find more outfits in is I love wearing yellow but I just can't find outfits that I like that are yellow but I need to I haven't had time I, I you know in, in another to do thing um in my list uh but whenever I wear yellow I just see people smile a lot more <laughs> yellow is a, it really yeah. does evoke joy so I love yeah. wearing yellow um but yeah no red does evoke joy as well but yellow always does and you're wearing orange I love orange I love orange yeah. as well so orange does evoke joy for sure Something that's worth mentioning maybe, and tell me if you agree, Farah, but like as we go through the seasons of life, those are going to change. Wardrobes should maybe change. Environment should maybe change, you know? I mean, that's kind of the cool thing about creating art because we can always, we're always in that creative mode. We can create something new, create something different. Uh, I spoke with a, another artist on the show and he said he doesn't ever keep his art. He in fact teaches people to create and then destroy in order to, to bring in something new. Destroy. Yes. No, I couldn't do, I could never do that. <laughs> You're like, absolutely not. It's just an idea of the way that we think about things, being able to bring something fresh and new in to, yeah. to the world in order to, to keep creating, to, to keep up with, to not just, 
I think his idea of it is, is to don't stop being in creation. Mm -hmm. And if, if you think that you need to hold on to something for forever and ever, you know, when we start to talk about our identities and the way that we view ourselves and our belief systems. And the, the truth is, is that the only constant is change, right? Mm -hmm. And so because we're living in this world of constant change, and, and that's also the beauty of knowing how powerful we are as human beings, that, that we can heal ourselves, that mm -hmm. just because we feel this way at one moment doesn't mean that we're not going to feel a totally different way in the next. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And I and I'm always uh, somebody who loves learning from anything and everywhere, because we are surrounded by so much knowledge. And when you have a, a conversation with somebody who's coming from a different experience in life, you can learn from that, they can learn from you. So I, I love being in those situations and, um, you know, and uh, embracing that. So yeah, this is me um, uh, practicing mindfulness with Oriana in my hallway. So mm -hmm. Oriana, uh, uh, she she just gives me so much strength and instant stress relief so you know i will engage with sense of touch as well and just having some quiet time sitting there engaging in um the you know textures the movement the light because there's natural light coming in and seeing the surfaces dance with the natural light is lovely as well but yeah it's just mindfulness using art has also helped people who find it hard to shut down the, the, the you know, traffic in their head. Mm. So I've, I get that response from people as well when I do sessions with them that, um, you know, they find it easier to work, to, to practice mindfulness using art because they can focus on the art rather than block out what their, you know, mind is always like, you know, running around at breakneck well, speed. It's definitely it's bringing yourself to the present moment. Yes. Yeah, this is a lovely memory from uh, one of my workshops in Hong Kong. I had um, uh, the um, I had my solo show there in Hong Kong, and the gallery owner was very kind and hosted two workshops with two different organisations in Hong Kong. And um, this was a really, really wonderful experience. Great, great bunch of people, and um, this young young gentleman, he loved the mess of it. He loved creating the <laughs> textured art because what I do in my workshops, it's in three sections. The first section is um, the participants experience art using their sense of touch and give me their interpretation of what they are feeling. And that is very emotional sometimes because sometimes they come up with such like a poetic response that can be really emotional for them and for me. And, and, and that's what I mentioned before is instantly I'm connecting with complete strangers through art. So then we do the color recognition exercises and then we create textured art um, using different materials where once the paint paintings are dry, the blind participants can share that with their family and friends. And that's been so wonderful to have that. This is a workshop in New York um, with Visions New York, such an amazing organization. I did, I think three workshops with them and um, mm -hmm. yeah, amazing participants and and also I'd like to just highlight every workshop has cited volunteers who make it all happen and I'm so grateful for all of the volunteers at each workshop because they fill in the um, response forms and they assist each participant with everything so yeah so um, a huge much gratitude to all the work um, the volunteers um, this is with um, the um, Museum of Contemporary Arts in Sydney um, Again, an amazing um, experience. And this is um, the um, participant experiencing the, the deep red um, using just the mm. vibrations. So yeah, just to give you a very quick um, explanation of how you can feel these vibrations, you need a centimeter from the surface. So it can be apples, it can be, you know, even cloth, contrasting colors. And you, you need to have the surface, but a centimeter from the surface of the item where you then have the um, distance for the vibrations of the energy to travel to your palm of your hand and you need to just shut down your mind and hopefully be able to just focus on what's happening and you do feel the heat from the warm colors and the cool vibrations from the cool colors and if you can't do it the first time I mean this is a you know very kind of high level quick explanation that's not the way I would do it at workshop but we can all do it and I love sharing that with people 
I think that's why we need to attend one of your workshops. <laughs> and I, I'm going to mention it now and we'll, we'll mention again towards the end, but uh, www.farahsayedart.com. That's F-U-R-R-A-H. S-Y-E-D-A-R-T. It is also in the description below for all of you who are interested, which how could you not be? If you've made it this far through this interview, this is fascinating stuff. I absolutely love it. I think that it's a, actually a beautiful explanation of how you're describing how we can really start uh, quieting ourselves, tuning in. You know, you've given us the spacing, the idea of what it what we need to do in order to at least begin uh, really coming to understanding what it feels like to feel that energy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, this is in Hong Kong as well. Um, but yeah, this is a, you, it's just a joy. As I said, the people that I have met all over the world, it's just so, so, so nice to have that share the joy of art, experiencing it in a different way. Um, oh, this is at the MCA in Sydney and, um, you know, I, you can see me laughing. I, laughter is very important for me. I um, uh, I really, really do enjoy having humor in wherever situation that we're in because it, it instantly gets you connected with people because you have a feeling of trust. And mm -hmm. laughter in terms of well-being is so vital. The I mean, laughter has saved my life. No joke. It, it, it's saved my life in many of challenging times that I've had. And I have just been so grateful for how laughter, whether it's with friends, whether it's a sitcom, um, whether it's a book or whatever, it has saved me. Um, so whenever I'm interacting with anybody, I always make sure laughter is an element in there. And again, it instills trust in people as well, brings down any anxiety and relaxes people, which is mm. how we should all be together if possible. But, um, you know, everyone has different aspects of, how they feel in a group. So if I see somebody who does feel a little bit anxious, I make sure that I give them time to give them a sense of comfort and trust and get them to relax. And I'm very grateful so many times that I've had that feedback from people to say, oh, you know, I didn't know what to expect, but I really appreciate you making me feel very welcomed and, you know, um, hearing what I had to say. And I, I appreciate that, you know, you, you're, you're somebody who's easy to talk to, so. <laughs> Yes. And, and you're right, Farah. It certainly brings down the barriers, doesn't it? And they say that uh, a smile is contagious. So it, yes. it is, it's so important for us to know that and understand that because we never know what's happening in anybody's life. You know, you, you have people that maybe frown or they cut you off or, or do whatever. And, and it's so easy to be able to take that uh, offensively, right? We, yeah. we, but we don't know what's happening. We don't know if their parent just died or, you know, who knows? We just yeah. don't. And because of that, offering this, this beautiful smile and mm -hmm. this love and laughter and compassion mm -hmm. and opening our hearts to those around us is, is not easily done if you're not familiar with, but the importance of it is the way that we change the world and our environment yes. and our energy. Absolutely. Can I also just mention, April, that my name, Farah, means happiness. Oh, so of course happy. it does. <laughs> <laughs> I am so grateful to my parents for naming me this name, which actually means happiness. And I didn't know this until about, I'd say, what, 12 or so years ago. But when, when I found out, I'm like, oh, that kind of like, you know, I'm really, I'm very happy, I'm going to use the word happy again, but I'm very happy that I'm yeah. named after such an incredible uh, feeling. So I'm very, very grateful for that as well. Yes, I can see that. I can see that. Absolutely. Yeah. So Vision Australia, I'll just make um, a, a reference to this. Again, going back to when I said in my 40s, I just had no fear to just go for something. So when I was, um, I had my um, solo show in Hong Kong, and then I was invited to deliver a speech because um, I was part of the Clinton Global Initiative in Melbourne. So since I was going to be in Australia anyway, I thought, you know what, let me look up blind organizations in Melbourne and see if they'd like to, um, uh, you know, um, have my workshops there. So I literally just picked the phone up, spoke to somebody at Vision Australia. They then went onto my website and they said, yeah, please do. 
But then is there a chance that you can be on our radio show? And also, is there a possibility you can go to our branch in Sydney? All of these things wow. happen because I made that call and I wasn't scared to make the call. So, you know, that's what I'm saying to anybody out there. Just do it. <laughs> uh, I I love that story. You're absolutely right. It's it's again stepping into the the unknown, the being curious about what possibilities lie ahead. I mean, that's a beautiful way to live. And you are proof that all of the doors are opening. You've described numerous places around the globe that you have given people access to this this incredible knowledge, inspiring others, including inspiring them to continue on sharing the knowledge with the people that they serve and are around. And so, Farah, it's been amazing to have you on the Wellness Driven Life Show. It's been an honor, a pleasure. I absolutely love the experience today. Is there anything else you want to share with our audience today? Um, I'd like to just, um, again, talk about how we are so strong as humans and we are also able to access things that make us feel better without needing to rely on anybody else so you know whether it's music or art or you know any different things so always feel that you can do that and i as i said i'm very very grateful for laughter and i would love to down the road down the road um do a collaboration with comics that have made me laugh my whole life um which would be wonderful to, to join the power of art and laughter you know um jim carrey is an yeah. incredible um comedian and has just made you know millions across the globe happy people like jerry seinfeld which would be interesting it might get a bit messy with jerry seinfeld because apparently he doesn't like art so we'd have to overcome that you know first but just Art and laughter, I think they have a very good pairing together. I think mm -hmm. there's something to explore there. I think that you could start creating that even now when you start <laughs> in, on posts that you share with people mm -hmm. on Mondays. You can you can highlight something about how they do mesh and pair together. They uh, do, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. they do. Yeah. Yes. And, mm -hmm. and mentioning Jim Carrey, he's really offering so much of his wisdom to the world yeah. as well. Very, very mm -hmm. inspiring. Uh, and, you know, it's interesting because, uh, you know, when we think about Robin Williams and people and, and oh. Jim, Jim Carrey also mentions it a little bit about how he's had points in his life where he has been depressed and battled with those yeah. lower energies and yet being able to bring laughter into the piece and share that with the world is, yeah. is their way of, of dealing with that and coping with that. So very inspirational. Can I just say, April, you mentioned Robin Williams. He is my hero and I'm sure you've seen the film Patch Adams. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. So okay. yeah. Bless so you. You're the, you're the modern. You day about Patch Robin. Adams. Sorry. He said, you're the modern day Patch Adams. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my That's God. Okay. You're getting me emotional now. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. it makes a lot of sense to me. And uh, so I think it's very fitting. Again, Farah, it has been so good to have you on the Wellness Driven Life Show. I want to make sure, again, that everyone knows where to find you. Um, it's going to be in the description below. Thank you so much. And thank you to our audience for tuning in. Without you, the show wouldn't be possible. So I want to thank you again, Farah, for your time here on the Wellness Driven Life Show. Thank you. It's my pleasure, April. And thank you so much for your lovely invite. And it's been a pleasure to talk with you. And thank you for how you empower so many people with wellness um, you. You know, insights. So thank you for everything that you do. My pleasure. Thank you. And goodbye for now, everyone. We will see you next time. Bye-bye.